Hello, hello, hola mi gente. This is a walk around Puerto Rico, the video series. Today, um, our lesson is called From Boricán to Puerto Rico. But before we start, I'm Daniela, and this is Hana. And uh, we wanted to talk a little bit about why we're here today. So I'm from the... <laughs> I'm from Puerto Rico, and I love my island. And interacting with these uh, different youth centers and programs, um, I realized that in Philly and probably around the world, um, there's a big Puerto Rican community that probably misses home and really wants to know more about the island and what life there is like and what we've gone through. Um, not only Puerto Ricans, but probably a lot of people are really interested. So we created this video series, um, A Walk Around Puerto, Puerto Rico, uh, to kind of talk about the arts, the culture, the history, and some current events that are going on um, in the island. So welcome, welcome. So first thing first, um, recently in the uh, Tokyo Olympics, Jasmine Camacho Queen, Afro Boricua, born and raised um, more so in the States. She represented Puerto Rico and won the, she was an Olympic gold medalist for 2021 in track and she also made a new olympic record um in the semifinal counting 12.26 seconds um in a race and that's crazy so we're super super proud and excited for her <laughs> um yes hana would you like to intro some discussion questions yeah uh so with this course too we we love to talk and it encouraged conversation around the topics that we'll cover um so we encourage like to to think about these questions but also talk to your friends and families about about this so specifically today we want to ask what is culture to you and how do you carry it with you um daniela do you do you want to speak on that yeah so culture can be um, a tie that is made because of your family, but it is also just the influences that you absorb from the places and the people that surround you. So we invite you to think, what does this culture mean to you? Do you know your roots? And how do you honor these things that you've learned throughout the years, you know? Yeah. Well, that's beautifully said, um, and that goes so well into like, do you know your roots? Like, how do you honor them? Uh, like, all these questions are so nicely tied together. Um, and so, as we, as we talk about uh, what influences Puerto Rico's um, culture today, we want to encourage you to reflect on these um, for yourself. For yourself, yeah. And so as, as a supplement for today's class, uh, we, uh, Carrie Talbot Saunders made a beautiful handout about the roots of a modern day Puerto Rico. Uh, so it, it talks about uh, the Tainos are the indigenous natives that lived freely in the island and peacefully in pre-colonial times. The Spaniards came with the discovery of the Americas and they brought technology and Catholicism to the island. And then finally, the Africans were brought as slaves to the island. But their harsh experience, but from their harsh experiences, they created song and dance. And it's this unique mix of these three races and cultures, along with time and the evolution of society that has created the modern Puerto Rican. Yeah. So have fun coloring in these the ancestral figures in this handout. Yeah. Um, all of these links will be. Um, available in the description section of this video. Um, Artsphere has a vast uh, blog with a lot of different handouts for you to check out. Um, 
And so this is the one that's posted about the roots of a modern day Puerto Rican. So going off of that, the Tainos, they were the natives of the island and they called her Borican. So a little bit of Taino life. Tainos were a very peaceful indigenous tribe that lived all across the Antilles. Um, and they lived off the riches of the earth, hunting and fishing. They had a lot of traditions and storytelling, games, music. Some of these are like precursors to modern soccer games. They had this uh, game called Batu that had a ball made out of roots and dirt. And the point of the game was to keep it off the ground with everything except your hands. Sounds familiar, right? <laughs> Um, some of the Taino verbal heritage, uh, we get the word barbecue from the Taino words barbacoa. The modern word hurricane from the deity of bad weather called huracan. Um, the lizard called iguana, which I'm not a fan of, but they're cute or whatever. Um, also a Taino word. Um, in Puerto Rico, some of the municipalities are named after some caciques or the tribes leaders of um, the different tribes that lived along the island. So they are called Guaynabo, Guayamas, Iales, Vieques. And yeah, there's just rich verbal heritage. And sometimes you don't even realize that these words come from the Taino influence in the island. Um, even the word Boriken, which is the original uh, name for the island, uh, Puerto Ricans nowadays call themselves Boricua and they chant, Yo soy Boricua, pa que tu lo sepas. And that is in reverence to that um, ancestral land that ties us together. And even if we're far away from that land, um, it still has this nostalgic feel to it. And being Boricua is special in a way. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, and so Puerto Rico is the Spanish name for it as it when it became a Spanish colony. This is what they called it uh, in 1493 when Christopher Columbus uh, discovered the island uh, of Borgen, he claimed it for Spain and uh, first called it the island of San Juan Batista. Yeah, and so San Juan later became the capital and then the rest of the island became Puerto Rico. And Puerto Rico, what it means is directly translated is rich port. And this was because there was a lot of riches in the island, including gold. And so the Spaniards came and they had the Tainos who had big medallions and uh, beautiful jewelry made out of gold, um, excavate this gold and then they would ship it to Spain and be like, oh my gosh, look at all of this riches that we found. Mm. <laughs> yeah, and, and so now the with that Spanish influence, with Spanish colonization, it now the official language of Puerto Rico is Spanish, uh, despite later uh, American uh, attempts of making it English. Uh, uh, Old San Juan, which it was the capital, is, is a national heritage with a lot of very important uh, old architecture there. Um, the streets were built with uh, uh, cobblestones called adequen. Adequines. Adequines, sorry about that. Um, yeah, the streets were built, were built with cobblestones called adequines. Uh, that in some parts are still the ones that are the Spaniards built into the road. So if you're walking around Old San Juan, you may in fact be walking around on stones that uh, the Spaniards installed. Uh, and so the town, uh, as it was a colony, was built with a classic colonial Spanish architectural style that can be appreciated in other previously Spanish colonies like Cuba. Um, 
And so uh, another important part of their, uh, the architecture there is the uh, Portacoli church, or it means uh, gateway to heaven. Um, uh, how do you say the long name? <laughs> um, in Spanish, it's called El Convento de Santo Domingo de Porta Celli. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and it is one of the oldest uh, churches to said to be in the entire Western Hemisphere. It is still open for visitors now, uh, and it has a uh, museum of uh, old religious art that you can go visit. Yeah. Yeah. And then we got the African roots. So the people who were brought from uh, Africa, they were the Yoruba people. And they were brought to the island as slaves for rich landowners. And although they were subjected to very harsh conditions, they were very resilient people. Um, so some of the heritage that we can see is the percussion instruments, such as wooden cast drums that they were used to create beats and sing and dance. Um, we can see it in the music genre that is still very important to Puerto Ricans nowadays called bomba. And yeah, this music genre was developed uh, as a song of resistance. It was a song of letting the frustrations of the day out. Um, and actually fun fact, um, the dancer steps are some of the beat markers for the people who are on the, for the primo who is on the um, big drum. Yeah, and they used to sing about, yeah, the people's experiences. Also some verbal heritage, words like guineos, um, which is bananas, but in some other parts of Latin America, they're called very, very differently, like banano, platanos or tambur. Um, <laughs> so guineas is our word of, for bananas. Um, gandules, which are pigeon peas, very essential for a Puerto Rican dish called arroz con gandules, rice with pigeon peas. We love it during Christmas time. And then a word like chevere, which means cool, also has some of this um, uh, African origins um, and also like African pronunciations. So in Puerto Rico, there's um, a little bit of colorism seen nowadays as well. So uh, a lot of people um, on the island will, will say that um, there's more sort of classism instead of uh, racism or colorism in the island. Um, but unfortunately, that's not the case. Um, we can see that according to the US Census Bureau, the population of Puerto Rico identifies as 64.1% white Hispanic, and then 17.2% of another Hispanic, 12.4% of Black or African American, and 4.76% of two or more Hispanics. And then lastly, less than 1% for white non-Hispanic. And so this is an interesting um, set of numbers because if we come from these three different races and they were so intermixed with each other, then why are we seeing that the majority of the population identifies as a white Hispanic? So the myth is um, that Puerto Ricans are all mixed and then real blacks compose of a tiny fraction of the population and they were never or never treated violently like in the US. This was taken from an article um, written by Jodens, um, that's her last name. Um, but um, a work of uh, drama that was written by Francisca Rivi called Vejigantes kind of explores that myth. And you'll see it in the generation of the three women that are portrayed through this um, dramatic piece. 
So there's a grandmother, a mother, and a daughter. And they talk about the experiences and pressures relating to skin color and society in the island. The thing is, the grandmother was um, a Black woman from Loisa who was um, unfortunately raped um, and by a white Spaniard and then had um, a mixed child. And then there's uh, this word called for mixed children from a white and black parent called mulato. So this was a mulata woman. And in the book, you can see that mother struggles to marry a white man so that Clarita, her, or so that she could have a whiter child and like save them from the pressures of being dark skinned in Puerto Rico. So the last, the daughter, Clarita, which is literally named for her fair skin, um, kind of breaks apart these um, stigmas in her family. And she talks about her black grandmother and her roots. And while well, it gets her into trouble in society, but through the novel, she herself gets that freedom of expression and being who she is and acknowledging where she comes from. So through this um, drama, you can see that there is tension when it comes to um, color in the island. Um, and then Puerto Rican society is obsessed with skin shades. And when it comes to a census, which portrays only two choices, black or white, most people don't fully identify with either, but will often choose white over black or African-American because of this colorism in the island. So extending from that, uh, it's important to look at the Afro-Latinx uh, culture and energy and revolution that is going on in Puerto Rico uh, currently today. Uh, the culture is still very alive and thriving. Uh, and at the same time, a lot of people in, in the Afro-Latinx community of Puerto Rico are fighting to be not only recognized, but for their struggles to be recognized, since there is this prevailing myth that, that uh, there isn't a comparable violence of the type that uh, you may see in the US. Mm -hmm. um, so there is, we really encourage you to check out this uh, trailer for the uh, documentary, which is fully available on YouTube called Afro Latinx Revolution. Uh, this uh, trailer uh, has Afro-Latinx people speaking for themselves uh, and very beautifully done. So we really encourage you, if you're curious um, at all, if you want to learn more mm -hmm. uh, or even just want to hear more from Puerto Ricans themselves, uh, this is a great uh, trailer and then documentary to watch. Yeah, great resource. And we'll, we'll link that in the description as well. Yes, we will. <laughs> and then, um, so the project for today um, is a cultural influence project. So like we mentioned before, culture doesn't necessarily have to come from the people that you're tied to by blood, it doesn't have to come from the place that you live in currently. Um, it's influences. So if you've seen, if you've heard, if you've shared with different people around the world and have adopted some things um, for yourself that you've learned, those are cultural influences that shape you. So through this project, um, on the side, we have some pictures of just ideas of maybe how you could shape it. Um, but I wanted you to start by collecting information. So names of individuals in your family, friends or role models that have inspired you or like shown you pieces of culture that you have like acquired. 
and then write about those things, make a list about them, just know where those roots come from. And then organize this information and how you'd like to present it. So either a flower and like you're in the center or like a family tree kind of thing um, where everything kind of blossoms. It can be a diagram. Um, yeah, and just like make this design that like, um, that can have enough space for these individuals or these um, things that you've picked up from different places and then put the information in. You can have pictures, drawings of those things that remind you or you've observed that like culturally influence you. And then that's it for today. Thank you so much for being here with us. Um, yeah, do you have any closing words, Hannah? Uh, I'm, uh, thank you for joining us for our, our first lesson. Uh, it's going to be uh, a wonderful video series and we really look forward to you joining us next time. Yeah, next time we'll be doing music and dance. So stay tuned. See ya. Adios, adios. <laughs>